Okay, uh, happy birthday, uh, Thomas Heatherwick. Today is um, his birthday, the 17th uh, of February, 2023, and we'll talk about uh, uh, his architecture. This is the man uh, with this, uh, you know, rather, I don't know if it is studied um, uh, romantic posture, is possible. Um, He's an interesting man, but um, I wonder a little bit uh, about certain things, you know, it's like uh, this, uh, you know, uh, frenzied uh, hairstyle. Uh, Einstein sported it too, so, you know, uh, you know, like, like the image on the left, in my opinion, is uh, dramatic, yes. He looks Dostoevskian, but a little bit studied, in my opinion. I mean, I, I'm not sure he's very, very genuine in, in his, in this, um, you know, uh, tense and uh, rather provocative uh, posture. This, this, this is, this is my instinct, but I could be wrong, of course. Um, anyway, he doesn't look like, I mean, he has something uh, that you know you you would not easily identify with a you know with a with a with a with a with a British man. But uh, anyway, Great Britain Pavilion, Shanghai, 2012. I, I like this work very much, uh, and uh, you know, legitimately, you know, it, it launched him, uh, you know, towards stardom. The seed cathedral. I like even the idea of a seed cathedral. I think it's very, very nice to dedicate a cathedral to seeds. And he designed it uh, impeccably. I mean, you know, when I say architecture should bring something new, well, here we have it. Who would have thought of any building to look like this? Now, if it is also a, a seed cathedral, even more so. Uh, I think it was a brilliant idea, and, uh, and, and, and he did a great job. Not all his buildings, I think, but it, this is a peculiar building. You know, it is a building, but uh, you know, it's 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 more like a you know lyrical manifesto, uh, halfway between architecture and design, or object design, because he is not actually he was not he didn't receive training in architecture. He's a designer, an industrial designer, but who has uh, immense success now as an architect as well. Not everybody is uh, seduced by him. I read some negative articles, uh, even about uh, a bus he designed or some other things. There is a, there is a, uh, you know, some flamboyance in in, in his work, which which um, some people think is a little bit forced. But I, but this proposal, and it, it's quite adequate because it's for a for a world, uh, you know, exhibi exhibition. So it, it's 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 a building uh, that you know it, it's it's part of that context to exhibit, you know, a pavilion. This is the pavilion of uh, of Great Britain. Is it sustainable? Of course not. I mean, when we look at, at what humanity builds for some kind of, of a show, we realize how much we consume the resources of the earth. And even sadly, like in this case, for a, you know, a rather short titillation, because most buildings from world exhibitions are destroyed, are demolished. Maybe this was demolished too. It's it's actually very sad and almost unexplainable because so much intelligence goes into it, talent, work, materials, and so on, and then to destroy it. So in essence, this thing in these tubes, uh, you know, there are uh, placed seeds 
you know, seeds that uh, were collected in this so-called cathedral of seeds or seed cathedral. I like the idea very much. Now, of course, uh, a Muslim, for example, would uh, protest, would probably say, why not, a, 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 you know, a seed mosque? Why a seed cathedral? So I think there is some legitimacy here to such a, you know, a, a, a comment. But, you know, this, I don't know. I mean, there is even the sign of the cross. You can see uh, here insinuated the cross. Here we could debate a little bit, you know, what does the cross have to do or Christianity has, what does it have to do with, with seeds? The seeds, uh, do, the seeds don't have religions. Nature doesn't have religions. So I wonder what, why he did it so. What, what is the meaning of the cross here? Um, it's insinuated. Yes, so you see the tubes where the seeds are. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a seductive, brilliant work, but it is a showmanship here. A lot of showmanship. I like it very much, but I'm not sure about this insinuated cross. And then, of course, uh, considering also the title, the, the seed cathedral. But if, if we consider the seed, the cathedral as some kind of a, you know, spiritual construction that transcends specific, uh, you know, religious denominations, I guess it's okay. If the manifesto of the Bauhaus also was depicted, um, well, the cathedral of socialism, but it was the word cathedral. Uh, so, plus the, the cross is not, it is not, you know, ostentatious. It's not very, you know, it's not, it's not very, uh, very, very clearly defined, but it is suggested there. And uh, I guess it's okay. To, I, I'm not very sure about this, but I like very much the plan. You see in the plan as well, the cross. Um, I like the, you know, the, the apparent disorder around the seat cathedral, I think is very well designed, modeled, drawn, and it shows in a way the plan itself that, that, that the center that the seat cathedral represents uh, should make us think. It should make us think that those seeds are immensely important and they are. Now, the rolling bridge in London, a uh, whimsical creation by this uh, designer turned architect, but who never forgot to be an architect. It's, it's a bridge that now is not yet a bridge, but it could become a bridge. And here it is. Um, it's an invention and it works. Uh, it's whimsical, it's interesting. It's, he does have a, um, you know, a great capacity to, to you know, uh, astonish. So if a boat or a ship, well, a boat rather than a ship on these narrow canals, you know, would, uh, would arrive in front of the bridge. The bridge can, can uh, bring itself uh, upwardly. And, uh, and here it is, the, the, the boat can uh, advance on the water. It's a mechanism, you know, uh, a well-built, well well-conceived mechanism.
And since we love shows, it receives a lot of attention, of course. East Beach Cafe, this work is a little bit problematic for me. It's uh, rather massive and uh, again, I think his, uh, his appetite for showmanship is shown here as well. I mean, is it necessary for a cafe to be so, you know, flamboyantly, uh, you know, opulent? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, look, it's a lot of effort here, a constructive effort in order to bring this, uh, you know, uh, heavy uh, part of the building to the building site. I mean, you can imagine the cost of, of this procedure and the cost of the construction. And this is how it looks like towards, um, you know, not towards the water, but towards the street. Rather uninviting, no? I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it, it stirs up the curiosity, but it doesn't really invite you because it's totally blank. I, I don't think this is one of his best works. The interior, what can we say? You know, it's it's a cafe. It's a cafe, but uh, the building itself is is rather you know muscular, so to speak. Now the visitor facility at the Bombay Sapphire Distillery in La in England. I like this work, you know, with its uh, echoes of uh, Art, Art uh, Nouveau. Um, uh, plus, it's symbolism because it is a distillery, so, uh, you know, it has to do with uh, alcohol. And, uh, you know, this Dionysian, uh, um, you know, <laughs> agitation, formal agitation, could refer to some kind of uh, an intoxication. So you go inside the building and, uh, you know, uh, treat yourself in a certain way and then you come out and, um, you know, a changed man, a changed person because of the intoxication and the architecture. But, but even here there is a, you know, a, a clear indication that we have a, an architect who loves showmanship and he is good at it. The hospital, cardiology outpatients building in London. Now, I don't know, is this some kind of a reference to arterial fibrillations? To... But no, this is not an irregular heart beating. It's actually irregular, but as these pulsations, the, the pulsations, the, you know, make you think if you know it's a hospital, you know, doing, um, you know, a cardiology section of a hospital. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I, I had some troubles with the heart myself, and I wonder if I would go to such a hospital, you know, to check check my heart rhythm here, because somehow I feel that my heart rhythm would, would become even more, um, you know, uh, imbalanced 
in this building. I mean, it's not a soothing building. It's it's a it's a building that uh, increases, I think, the the tension, the inner tension, and the angst. It's regular. At least it's a regular rhythm, but rather heavy. Now, the hanging gardens in Shanghai. This is a work. I didn't see it there in Shanghai. I only saw it published. But I had some problems with this. And I think in general, I have some problem also. I recognize the talent and I even like, uh, you know, his romantic, uh, you know, photographs and so on. But I think, I think this um, is something demagogical here, you know, to make these, those concrete pedestals to receive the roots of a fragile plant, be it, uh, you know, uh, you know, a little tree or uh, something else, but I don't know. I, I think these architectonic concrete pedestals uh, are, are, are opposite to what we are supposed to do in order to, uh, in order to, you know, uh, give a chance to nature to come back. What I'm trying to say, I don't know if I'm inspired enough now to say it properly, is that, yes, we recognize the great need to bring back nature, to allow nature to assert itself. But this human concrete, which pollutes these this concrete pedestals, you know, uh, to support, uh, you know, uh, vegetal or plant um, uh, uh, fragility, uh, to me, is I mean, you know, it, 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 I think it's a little bit demagogical, because I'm thinking of what Brunkus said about the piedestals, the piedestals to his sculptures. Now let's imagine here that well, the tree or the bush is not a sculpture, but could be could be seen like some kind of an artifact made by nature. And then we have the pedestal, but here the pedestal overwhelms the artwork. I mean, what I mean, the, the, the pedestal overwhelms what it receives on top of it, what grows from it. And I don't think this is right, because what I see here, despite the apparent uh, triumph of nature, is still the old triumph of man meaning of concrete, meaning of, of the pedestal. And I don't think nature needs um, emphatic uh, pedestals in order to show ourselves around our, our, our affection for nature. So again, I, I, I think there is showmanship here. It's uh, the rhetorics of the building uh, um, make me a little bit uneasy. Of course, we create now mountain-like or hill-like configurations, architectural configurations, and then we climb with the vegetation on top of that uh, man-made hill or man-made mountain. But this mountain is made of concrete and I think there is a problem here. If we truly love nature, I think we should um, reduce the quantity of concrete that we use because this concrete is actually acting against nature. And uh, so there is some kind of a paradox here. The building seems to proclaim the need for nature to have the upper hand but on the other hand, I think the building is still proclaiming the power of man over nature. So I'm ambivalent about this building. I, I really find doesn't matter in what picture I look at. Um, I look at, uh, I, I, I see these uh, emphatic uh, pedestals, concrete. I mean, just imagine, you know, the this just this piece, this emphatic pedestal to support what a little bush, 
was it needed this? I mean, on one hand, you could say it shows the the desire of the of the of the designer to uh, uh, you know to 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 build something very solid uh, uh, symbolically as well to show the reverence for nature. But I don't I don't really see it like this. It's not a modest gesture. It's an emphatic. It's a bombastic is a bombastic architectural statement. And this bothers me because it shows that again, it's about Anthropos, it's not about nature. It's not about the bush, it's not about the tree, it's not about the plant or the grass, it's about still about man and the ego of man, Anthropos. I, I, I have a problem with this. I mean, uh, uh, look here at the top. I mean, this thing is, 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 is giant to support what? And why does it have to have this triumphalism about it? Because they are triumphalist pedestals. Creative units for artists. This is an interesting work, uh, whimsical, but... Um, and it shows great inventiveness in, in, in inventiveness, and then it, it shows, uh, uh, you know, he, he can do. It doesn't matter what program he works with. He he makes something special, maybe sometimes a little bit too special. Uh, uh, towards the outside, the the buildings, these units, which are art uh, art studios. Uh, show, uh, you know, a certain complexity. The skin of the building is, as you see it, it's metallic, it's wrinkled, and I like wrinkles, and I think we need more wrinkles in the world to show, to show maybe sometimes the, the inner drama, you know, the passing of time or whatever. So I like the wrinkles, but but what is outside is very different from what is inside. Because inside, there are no wrinkles. There are just white walls, white, uh, you know, surfaces. So, again, I, I see some, something a little bit uh, questionable here. Towards the outside, we see this, uh, you know, uh, folded uh, form. And it is metallic, and, and it, this is kind of interesting. You know, why did he choose the metal? You know, this um, this this uh, metallic sheet to cover the, the, the building in this way, and it, with, with its um, uh, folds and wrinkles. I'm thinking now, if uh, Vincent van Gogh would have, would have had such a studio, uh, his art would have benefited from it? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It's... Again and again, Thomas Heather, we cannot distance himself from uh, an appreciable amount of showmanship. Now that, uh, you know, uh, rift between the two sides of the building uh, makes me think a little too about it. You know, why, why, why is it so? Is it about the, you know, the very common uh, bipolar disorder that artists have? Maybe Heatherwick himself? It's possible because as uh, Faust said, uh, 
in Goethe's work, alas, two souls are dwelling in my heart. Maybe Heather Wick knows something about that duality as well. The interior, I hope, I, yeah, you know, if you are in, in the interior, you, you don't see the artworks, you wouldn't expect the exterior that we saw. You know, it's a modernistic uh, building structure, call it atelier or whatever, with white uh, walls, you know, very clean and all the rest. And uh, then comes the artist and agitates everything through the, you know, the crazy, the crazy forms sometimes artists use. Uh, let me see just a second. So there is some kind of a schism here between the outside and the inside. When you are outside, you don't expect the inside to look like it does. When you are inside, you wouldn't expect the outside to be as it is. So we can talk about it, you know. Is, does the exterior represent the interior properly? And does the interior represent the exterior properly? But what he does in a way is the opposite of what usually is done because usually we do the opposite. The interior is agitated, wrinkled, so to speak, and the outside is rather Apollonian. As Tadao Ando said, Tadao Ando made once this statement that he wanted to make an architecture <clears throat> that was towards the outside, like an artwork by Joseph Albers, Joseph Albers was an artist, uh, even a master, uh, you know, that ran a class at, at the Bauhaus uh, with a very, I don't know if, well, maybe Apollonian graphic works and artworks that showing a square within a, a square with, a, you know, color, but nothing agitating, nothing uh, emotionally charged more than, you know, whatever color he chose to use for those squares. But Tadawando said, that's what, that's what I would like towards the exterior, my buildings to look like Joseph Albers and the interior like Piranesi. In the case of uh, Thomas Heatherwick is the opposite. The interior, well, if you make abstraction of the, of the artworks that we look at now, just the building, it's rather, I don't know if Apollonian, but you know, white walls, clean geometry and so on. And towards the outside is not really Piranesi, but is more, you know, more unsettling and agitating because, because of the material he used. Although the material is, um, you know, he uses the will of the architect in its geometry. I, I, I like that old bicycle there. It looks like an old bicycle and old bicycles have uh, the, you know, the, the quality of uh, warming up anything uh, through the, you know, simple, uh, simple design. Uh, so these were the, the ateliers that um, uh, Thomas Heather designed now. We arrive at MOCA, M-O-C-A-A, -A, Cape, it's a museum. Uh, of contemporary art in Cape Town, uh, South Africa. I like this work because I like this work uh, mainly because, well, because he arrived at, at, at what we look at and we are going to see more images, but I like the, the procedure he made. The, the, what he did, he, he subtracted, he uh, uh, chiseled, he, he cut, it's an, an architecture of subtraction. So it was an existing building that he sectioned, he cut. And from those cuts, he obtained uh, these, uh, you know, uh, you could say crazy shapes. He is a very creative man, obviously. And, uh, you know, he did something uh, unexpected with this building that, that existed. I use this method myself and I like it, where you, you take a prism, for example, and you begin to subtract from it. You just cut 
you know, kind of like a, like a god up there who, uh, like a sculptor uh, who, who uh, yeah, in, now I don't find the, the word in, in, in English, but I know it in Romanian, Cioplește. If someone here could help me with a British word or English word, um, that's how he worked here. And he obtained these, um, these were the, the results of, of cutting into cylinders that uh, the, the previous uh, buildings had. I, 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 I like this work, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's original and it's, it, it's still, it, the old building is still uh, to be seen, but also you see the interventions of Thomas Heatherwick. There is some kind of a cathedral here too, no? Very much so. In fact, I wish the cathedral they are building now in, in Bucharest would look kind of like this, but no way. So here you see from the outside, you, you, you understand better how the old building was and what he did with the old building in order to arrive at what we looked at what we looked at, yes. It's an interesting work and uh, bravo to him. Inside it is a wow building. That's how it is. And he is good at uh, creating uh, you know, such um, architectures which make you say, wow. Now, the rooms where the art actually is are rather banal, you know, white walls, straight walls, not to irritate the artists, but the central atrium uh, is uh, interesting, is cultural, is engaging, is dramatic. A good strategy and I think a good uh, end result. In this case, he changed the strategy. Uh, the, the artist studios were inside, as I called it, Albers-like or um, Apollonian and uh, Dionysian towards outside, although not completely Dionysian and not completely Apollonian. Here, Dionysus is inside and towards the outside, you know, uh, if you don't see this, uh, the stomach of the building, they will say, okay, there are some cylinders there, but nothing unsettling. It's an interesting museum. University building in Singapore. Now this one, I don't know. I mean, maybe yes, maybe not, but rather not, in my opinion. It, it, there is a little bit of inflation. Inflation. Of, uh, there is still something a little bit bombastic for my for my taste. Uh, but and the plan also shows this, um, you know, liking of. Uh, of, uh, of, of what is bombastic. He can build anything and, and, and the commissions he receives are generous enough to allow him to do whatever he wants to do.
the flower motif seems to uh, uh, engage him in uh, various uh, ways when he does buildings. Here too, to an extent, is this an homage to nature? In part, it is maybe too explicit a little bit, maybe. Now, we were together with Foster and Associates for this um, Arts and Culture Center in Shanghai. I don't know. I mean, you know, as a poet asked, when, when, when a, anything is allowed, nothing matters. Because practically, anything goes. But... Foster is not an architect of a Baroque, uh, you know, state of mind. Heatherwick is. How they collaborated? Well, they did. New York, New York's Hudson Yards, the vessel. Now the vessel looks very nice during the construction, and there are there were pictures, and there are pictures taken of the vessel that are very impressive, but it depends where you take the picture from. I will try to explain. This is a staircase to nowhere. Um, maybe these words um, um, make us better understand him. You know, a staircase which goes nowhere. Um, Nothing wrong, perhaps, with a staircase which goes nowhere. No, no, I shouldn't say so. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm inspired now to to articulate what I what I feel like saying. I like this picture very much. Of this, of this, uh, as he calls it, a vessel. It's labyrinthical. It's complex. It's um, it's um, visceral, but from the outside, it's very much like a giant object, like a vase uh, or, or like a Christmas tree upside down. When we are going to see the whole building, uh, you'll understand better. I mean, I don't know if I have here. I imagine I do. Um, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I did this presentation after the vessel was finalized or not, sorry about this. Um, unfortunately, I read that uh, there were a few suicides that happened from the vessel. People threw themselves to death from one of these platforms. But we cannot accuse the architect for it, really, uh, as some people suggested. Now, uh, I like I like the building, but this is my my particular uh, psychology, you know, or turn, you know, uh, my my. I like it when it is still in the process of becoming, because because my imagination could uh, continue, and uh, and I I like the asymmetry of the, of a work that is not complete. Yeah, I particularly like this image. You know, it's very dramatic and you can imagine, you know, the, the immense effort, financial, material. Uh, I mean, these pieces were made somewhere else in the, in the factory and brought here, they are huge. I don't know, again, again, he has an appetite for, for showmanship. Of course, these pictures are very seductive. But, well, New York can afford it. The, New York can, uh, can afford it, but New York couldn't afford it to, fit, to finalize, to an extent, St. John the Divine Cathedral. They cannot finish that cathedral. Now, of course, any cathedral is unfinished. But to bring it to a certain level of completion, 
but they build this giant so-called vessel which goes nowhere and you see it here it's like a vase uh, but a huge vase at the level of of of, of, of the city I, i'm not very very fond of this building because i i think it's too object like it's 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 i'm not against symmetry but here is a oppressive symmetry because of the and centrality of the building uh, is rather the centrality and the uh, symmetry of an object not of a not of a building uh, many great architects use symmetry it's nothing wrong with symmetry but this is yeah again i mean here i think he's more of a designer than than an architect but these pieces the the parts that compose the vessel to me are very seductive i like them very much i wish i wish they remain like this like an or maybe a broken vessel a broken vessel i think would have been better but it's not broken and it's hard to break it i like it like this where we see fragments of it i like it very much like this but when I see the finalized, finalized vessel or object, I, uh, because it is an object, and I think a great building is not an object, but this is an object. And there's something of a, of a giant uh, metallic uh, Christmas tree upside down. That, that's how I'm inclined to see it, but not at the level of fragments, if we can call these giant fragments fragments. I like it very, he should have left it like this, you know, like the uh, kind of a bubble tower in reverse or upside down, unfinished. I think if he would have left it just like this, it would have been great, but he didn't. Maybe he couldn't, I don't know. And here we see the crazy New Yorkers, and I love New York, and I love the New Yorkers, you know, who are full of energy, and uh, they dance around the, the vessel during the construction, its construction. Um, I wish I had other pictures. I think I have another picture, another PowerPoint presentation, where I also show a picture of him advocating the project to the um, mayor of New York and the governor of the state of New York, but I guess it's not on this presentation. Now the Google headquarters, Thomas Heather, we can big. I don't know what to say. I mean, they are both very interesting architects and uh, very creative, but I think they have a, they have a, a, an eye on uh, on success via. You know a certain certain mundanity and uh, and commercialism and this explains the immense immense success and good for them otherwise they could not have arrived at such commissions and this was built but what was strange is that at least after it was built i didn't see so much mention of it in the media as before it was built. Maybe, maybe, I mean, I'm sure it was changed the project from the preliminary, you know, studies. And maybe it's not so, I don't know, seductive or, um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe something was lost in the process of bring, bring, bringing the building uh, to, to the, you know, uh, to the final stages. Uh, uh, Singapore apartments, Eden is designed to resemble a spine blade, simple vertical rectilinear planes with slim windows from, form the blade with generous garden balconies situated in between. This approach grants privacy for each of the 20 apartments, only 20 apartments, you imagine what apartments, and you also imagine the price and allows for a generous central living space that forms the heart of each residence. The unconventional concrete walls are molded with a topographical map of Singapore's terrain, which has been abstracted to create a unique three-dimensional texture. 
The focus on creating a garden for each apartment is a response to the discon disconnection between high-rise apartments and the lush greenery at street level in, level in Singapore. Responding to Lee Kuan Yew's original vision of Singapore as a city in a garden, the design extends the landscape of Singapore upwards through the building with a series of hanging gardens connecting the interior living space with the outdoors, providing views of Singapore's green landscape. Sounds paradisiacal. And this is the building. Um, I think it's a, it's a good tower, uh, but, but how many, 20, how many apartments? 20 something apartments. I mean, on each floor, an apartment, uh, the cost of an apartment is millions of dollars, millions. So who, be, who lives in this tower? Well, the privileged, of course. And the privileged in a, in a privileged country, because Singapore is the, the Switzerland of Southeast Asia, you can imagine. It's a luxury building. Now, these people enjoy themselves, of course. Who wouldn't? But who are they? Probably, most surely, financial speculators, yuppies. They certainly are not poets. The poets will never uh, live in such buildings. Uh, and again, flamboyance and the bombasticity. Because what I see here is a bombastic architecture these uh, balconies are uh, you know he tries to mimic you know so-called petals but you know petals made of concrete at this scale i have some doubts the apartments are obviously uh, you know to be envied i mean uh, and it's not a bad building it is a, it, it it has qualities. It's interesting. It's, it's well built. It's, it's a rich building, maybe too rich. Too rich because because when God made nature, or nature made nature, because uh, for Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, you know, he spelled God as nature, or he spelled nature as God. He, he was asked. Do you believe in God? And Frank Lloyd Wright said, I do, but I spell it nature. So who created nature? We don't know. Let's say God, or maybe nature created nature. But in nature, a tree, uh, bushes or grass are not for the privileged few. Are for everybody. Well, here is not the case. There is verticalization of nature is very discriminatory. Uh, probably uh, Thomas Heatherwick didn't have uh, headaches because of this matter at all. I find it, uh, despite the, the aforementioned uh, qualities, I find it rather arrogant. You know, it's imagine you are someone with a very low income at the base of this building, looking upwards. This building is telling you, sorry, this is not for you. But I guess injustice is very often related to architecture, and the architect is. Uh, often in the service of those who can afford him or her. And this is a bathroom. Is it covered in marble? Perhaps. I mean,
uh, somebody actually from Romania, Andrea Cutieru, who used to publish often on Arch Daily, but not lately, after surpassing many hurdles, the long awaited public part and performance venue is on a set course to completion. This is about the next work we are going to see in New York City. The construction of the little island is underway and new images by photographer Paul Clemens of Archie Photo show the un undulating artificial landscape coming together above the Hudson River. So we leave uh, Singapore when we arrive in New York City. Designed by Heather Rick Studio, the off offshore park will feature three outdoor performance spaces, including an 800-seat amphitheater, as well as numerous pathways and viewing platforms, accessed via two dock-like pathways connecting back to the New York City shoreline. The structure comprises some 132 mushrooms shaped concrete columns that rise above the water, creating a new topography. The architecture studio worked with MNLA to design the green space, which will be home to 100 species of trees and plants. The project is meant to foster vibrant art, education, and community space, creating a distinct performance venue. At the same time, it also serves as a resilience mechanism against climate change, shielding the shoreline from storms. Now, wait a minute here, you know, those uh, 132 mushrooms shaped concrete columns are certainly serving the climate change, accelerating it, not fighting it. But, you know, uh, it's so easy to deceive ourselves with, uh, uh, you know, uh, inflated words. And again and again, just like in Shanghai, this giant concrete pedestals are actually an insult to nature. So let's not, let's not deceive ourselves. You know, this is not how we fight for uh, bringing back nature in the foreground. This is not how we fight against climate change. It's, it's, it's actually perverse to create this giant forest of concrete columns in order to, to have some grass and some bushes on top of it. I find it very questionable. I actually find uh, that I see here a lot of superficiality. You know, it's, it's the la, la, la même Jeannette autrement coiffé, as the French say. The same Jeannette, but with a different coiffure. 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 In fact, the, what, what he built here is, is, in essence, very similar to what is built here, but with a different shape. Concrete, concrete, and concrete again. Yes, the shapes are maybe interesting, but they turn me off with the demagogy. You know, it's really, I mean, look at that tree there, or two trees. I, 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 it doesn't, I, I, I cannot easily accept this. Yes, he has the talent. Yes, he created something interesting. But again and again, I think he underlines the supremacy of Anthropos, not of nature, the supremacy of man. You know, now we, 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 we kill nature in the city, and now we extend the same mentality in the water. So we actually prolong the misery instead of fighting against it. Uh, truly, this, uh, this uh, uh, forest of uh, concrete uh, so-called mushroom columns, they are not mushrooms, Monsieur Heatherwick. They are not mushrooms. They are mush so-called mushroom concrete columns, very heavy, very emphatic, and very many. I'm, I'm actually tired of, of, of this uh, human demagogy. And look at that poor tree there, all alone, on top of the giant concrete pedestal. That's not a love of nature. That's a love of yourself, Mr. Heatherwick. It's the love of Anthropos, not the love of nature.
if you love nature, you would have abstained from advancing into the water with these uh, many, many, many giant concrete, uh, whatever they are called, mushroom uh, concrete uh, columns. It, it saddens me because there is talent here, there is work, there is uh, ingenuity, there is uh, there are qualities, but at bottom is something almost fake. This is not love of nature. I'm sorry. Uh, you can make the forms, uh, you know, resemble flowers or petals, but in essence, you are actually promoting the same assault on nature like uh, your predecessors. What do I see? It's again and again the triumph and triumphalist, triumphalism of man. Launch is, what is this, in the heart of Tokyo, uh, 2019. Uh, it's a building, I think we are approaching the end uh, here. It's a building that he proposed. Um, I don't know if it was built in Tokyo. Well, again, we climbed the building with a green, but, but in essence, it's still man. You know, uh, allowing poor nature to climb wherever we want it to climb, but not, we, we are still triumphantly, uh, tri triumphantly asserting that man is the measure of all things. Look at all this glass here. Glass, glass, and glass again. Well, this glass means great losses of energy, means the need, the desperate need of air conditioning, this is not a sustainable building. This is not a building which says, uh, you know, uh, we are living at a different time now. We have to be careful with the resources we use and we have to be careful with pollution. We have to be careful. No, no. This is, again, la même Jeannette, no autre monde coiffe. It's just like this building, but with a different shape, a different coiffure, coiffure. So he said, Thomas Hederick, it's been very exciting working on this project. Uh, and much of our effort has been focused on designing the public spaces that everyone will experience when they spend time in this new area. As many new developments around the world can be harsh and sterile, we wondered if we could provide a more human-centered alternative by integrating surprisingly intense quantities of planting and greenery. Well, he said it himself, human-centered. Of course, it is human-centered and not any kind of human, but those with money. I mean, uh, who would go, who would have the nerve to go inside this building? The immigrant? The unemployed? The student? No. This is uh, another glorification of, uh, of those who with a lot of money. So who is that, you know, who is that uh, human that this building is actually uh, concerned about and, and, and uh, addressing? Anyway, but we climb our buildings with, with nature, we torture, well, we first tortured the trees by cutting them down in forests. Now, we torture them in a different way. We plant them on concrete slabs at various heights far away from the earth. The scientist says that uh, the tree is fine. That, you know, there were experiments, uh, analysis, uh, and they arrived at the conclusion that the tree is very happy on the 10th floor of a building, if not on the 20th floor of a building, with its roots coming out of, uh, you know, some kind of a container with earth, but all having underneath a, a, a heavy concrete slab. 
But did we, did we ask the tree what it feels? Of course, we say, come on, we don't talk with trees. It's known that trees don't, don't understand us. Because this is our conception, that the tree is, 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 is mute and stupid and doesn't feel anything and doesn't think. Well, this was not always uh, what uh, humans thought of trees. Anyway, uh, it's still the supremacy of Anthropos here. That's what it is. A more uh, anxious Anthropos, a more uh, a skillful in artistic expression. But all these buildings, in my opinion, proclaim the same old story. Man is the measure of all things. We can curve certain forms, we can make them petal like, but in essence, we build for men and we don't really care, you know, about the bush and the tree and the grass and the plants. No, no. If we care about them, it's not for them, it's still for us to give us more oxygen, more ozone. It's still about us, not about them. That's what I think. It was not built as far as I know, but he builds other things in the same spirit. And what do we see here in this picture? The triumph of man, the triumph of Anthropos. And his building is not more modest than those towers behind. It's just another expression of the same attitude. You know, yes, we, 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 we make the building uh, more hybrid, more... Uh, complex formally, but in essence, again and again, when you look at that giant glass surface and you know the energy that is consumed there in order to uh, avoid the fact that the windows don't open, plus the function, because what else do we have there? A mall, what else? You know, stores, stores, stores for the terminal of all human activity, which is shopping, as Rem Kolha said. Concrete, look at the flowers, look at the, look at the fragility of nature, and look what it stands on. Giant beton structures. I don't think this is real sensitivity towards nature. I like Thomas Hetherick, the way he looks, he looks romantic, he looks sometimes possessed, and I like people who, who are possessed especially by passion for uh, art, for uh, creativity, and so on. But this giant structure in concrete shows me that um, the affection for nature that he has, has its limits. That's it. Uh, here I had another presentation about shop, but I will stop here because th that's where the presentation about uh, Thomas Heatherick, Heatherick um, uh, ends. Okay, so uh, just a second, let me... Uh, uh,